In this video, we're going to explore working with reference images in 3D Coat. We have two means to use, and uh, one is working with image planes that we're going to use as we model uh, for reference inside the viewport. And we have another tool available to us that uh, there's already a video that goes into more detail, but I'll just touch on it. And that is the image picker. It allows you to piggyback off of your color picker which is available in any of the rooms. You go to Windows menu and you can dock it into your workspace and thereafter when you come back to 3D Coat after having closed it or, or whatnot, it'll still be here. And if you want to save your workspace, you can do that so that it'll, it'll remain. Okay. So if you want to bring images in, you can do that. And you can zoom in and out. You can retarget it. You can, if you're zoomed in, you can actually pan so that you can work on discrete portions at a time. All right. Now let's go ahead and look at maybe redocking it somewhere in the viewport so that you have your tool between you and the reference image. Now we're going to go ahead and look at bringing image planes in. It's pretty simple actually in 3D Coat, so let's use the first method to bring it in, and that is going to the camera list here, the background, go over to the bottom of this list, image, edit image placement. Now we have this little dialog, this little pop-up, or we can just close it all together now if you want to keep this handy you can always assign a hotkey to it by hitting the end key on your keyboard that's the end -E, and now assign a hotkey to access it quickly I'm going to hit the escape key because I already have something assigned to it okay so you can always get right back to it if you need so I'm going to go ahead and choose and before I do this I want to make sure that I'm in the proper angle uh, so if I want a frontal image plane, I need to make sure that I'm in this particular orientation. So I'm going to choose. Okay, and you can scale it numerically if you like. Do five. You can use these transform handles. I'm going to go to an orthographic view by going to the upper right hand corner and toggling my perspective in orthographic. I can choose a different view here. Okay, so yeah, I can place this and I can scale along an axis if I like. I'm going to undo that. Same thing with the other axis. I can scale it by just grabbing one of these points and just do a kind of a global scale. And if I grab this little green handle or this green border here, it allows me to move it just freeform in screen space or along those two axes. Okay. Click frame. Okay. So you get the idea. Then I'm going to go to a front view and frame up. And now I can also just simply drag and drop straight into the viewport from the Explorer. Select Add a Reference Image. And you could also do this to uh, create a new pen, a new strip new material, uh, it's very handy. A reference image. And so I'm going to come out of orthographic view and line it up in 3D space where I want. As you can see, as I come closer to a perpendicular angle, now I will see the image plane that corresponds to this particular view. 
So I'm going to go ahead and move that back out of the way. I want to do the same here. I can also hide one particular image at a time. Or I can click show all planes and just hit close. So now if I want to go ahead and start modeling from here, I can just go to my different viewports. Probably want to be in orthographic mode again. Okay. And to bring up that panel, I'm going to hit my hotkey. And I can adjust the opacity, the inner opacity. and so on. If I want to scale all my planes, I can click transform and then scale it. I can hide all my planes at once and so on. So this should give you an idea of working with image planes and it's really good for modeling because you really have some outstanding tools to start from scratch straight in 3D code without actually having to model in an external application, so definitely give it a try on your next project. Thank you for watching.